My name's Azam, and I'm from Toronto, and you're watching EO TV. Welcome to EO TV. I'm Randall Mauricio, and this is your weekly Entrepreneurs Organization webcast. On today's show, we have ideas about leadership for you to ponder, and a great tip of the week from Jim Collins. We start by heading down under. As many of you know, being an entrepreneur is more than a job. It's a lifelong journey filled with the successes and challenges. Brisbane, Australia's Troy Hazard is the managing director of the Edge Corporate Strategies, and he's also the author of The Naked Entrepreneur. In his book, Troy uses his entrepreneurial experiences to provide advice for challenging situations affecting entrepreneurs. He also encourages other entrepreneurs to look back over their personal and professional journeys for solutions when tough business issues arise. So today, Troy shares a few business and spiritual insights from his book. Take a look. I've learned through the last 20 years that there are four key personality traits you can have as a leader in business. And they're simply this, master, mentor, manager, mate. Reevaluate yourself as a leader. How do you manage the relationships around you as a leader? Are you confident? Are you truthful? Or do you let ego and fear get in the way? If you're falling into bad habits like micromanaging or often reprimanding your employees, then maybe it's time to reevaluate your management style and maybe it's also time to reevaluate your key employees. Are they the people that you can trust with the future of your business? Invest time in leadership coaching through books and classes to understand what leadership qualities you need to display. But first, invest the time in examining yourself and removing bad habits that might be hindering your business relationships. Live according to your personal goals and convictions. What are your personal goals? Are you achieving success just to please others? Are you reaching goals just to validate yourself? Troy says that you are the only person that can judge your success and you should celebrate every accomplishment made, large or small. Don't get caught up in someone else's path to success. Keep your personal convictions and recent successes at the forefront of your mind. And make sure to congratulate others and make your own goals your motivation for future accomplishments. Reassess your purpose. Are you operating your business with purpose or have you lost sight of your original vision? Is the wealth and success of your business resting heavy on your heart and mind? Remember, true wealth is not based on what you own or what you invest in. Troy says it may sound cliche, but true wealth comes from within. So if you've lost sight of your purpose for your business because you know, you're consumed with daily operational and financial tasks, maybe it's time to find your motivation once again. So take some time to read through your business plan or maybe even write a new one so you can get back to enjoying the true riches of entrepreneurialism. Are you having trouble understanding the ever-changing realities of leadership? Well, Gary Cohen's the owner of CO2 Partners. That's an executive coaching firm that specializes in leadership training, strategic planning, and team building. Gary's book, Just Ask Leadership, provides tactical leadership advice for entrepreneurs, and he shares some of that advice with us today. First one is, improve your vision to create better decisions. As a leader of your organization, it's imperative that your vision for the future of your company is always at the forefront of your mind. If you don't already have one, make sure you create a vision plan where you build out ideas for the next several years and then consistently update your goals, ideas, and experiences so that you have some sort of a record of accomplishments and changes to your original objectives. But remember, your vision is the lifeblood of your organization's future. So when your vision continues to move forward, so does your organization. Another great point is to ensure accountability by building unity and cooperation. Accountability between a leader and his or her staff is a necessary element to building a cohesive team. As you know, when employees feel that their hard work isn't recognized or respected by the organization leaders, they become demotivated. And that's not good, obviously, because it's toxic for your company's growth. So increase organization-wide performance by creating culture of trust and respect. Implement team building activities to unify employees and to encourage more teamwork. And if you don't already know what types of activities would be the most effective for team building in your organization, Gary says, just ask. Your employees are a great resource to find out what's working and what needs to be changed. Lastly, Gary leaves us with an excerpt from his book. 
Leaders ask questions to set direction, put the right people in the right positions, seek insight from all levels, and ensure resources are allocated to the highest priority while acting ethically at all times and engaging people to stretch beyond what is comfortable to maximize results. I hope you wrote that one down. And that is your tip for the week. In this tip of the week, Jim Collins, author of Good to Great and Built to Last, shares how you can benefit from your own personal board of directors. Check it out. Hi, I'm Jim Collins, and I'm here with the tip of the week to talk about your own personal board of directors. When you're building your own company, you build a, a, personal, a, a, a board of directors to help you with decisions, to help guide the company, and you put good board members on it, and it helps you in the development of your enterprise. But have you ever thought about the importance of having a personal board of directors to help you personally develop as an individual? And the idea for the personal board came to me when I was in my, in my 20s, and I really wanted to have some wise uh, mentorship. My father had died a number of years earlier, and I couldn't rely upon him for guidance and wisdom and development. So I thought, how am I going to have that in my life? And one day I was, I was listening to uh, a series of lectures, or actually it was actually a, a, a reading of a book called Plain Speaking, which was an interview with the great President Harry Truman by Merle Miller. And partway through the interview, Harry Truman says, the only thing I know for certain is if you don't know the difference between right and wrong by the age of 30, you never will. And I was like 25, and I pulled off the side of the road and I thought, boy, I've got five years to figure this out. I thought, how am I going to build a guidance mechanism to help me stay on track? And I came up with this idea of a personal board, composed of seven people who I admire for their wisdom, for their values, for their integrity, for them wanting to hold my feet to the fire, for standards that I would be embarrassed to fail. And I wrote, I drew a sheet of paper, I put seven seats on it, and I wrote names in. Now, not every personal board member even knew they were on my personal board but all of them played a role in shaping me as a person. And over time, it played as integral of a role for me as any other mechanism that I had. So yes, you need a council. Yes, you need a, a board of directors for your own company. But also, it might be helpful to build outside of that your own personal board of directors. And that is your tip of the week. All right, thanks for joining me today. And the parting thought for this week is a good one. You do not lead by hitting people over the head. That's assault, not leadership. So think about that one, see you next time.